Uh, okay, so do you remember we talked about uh, another operation between a number and a vector? We learn how to multiply a number, a vector by a number, yes? And then I, I think I solved the problem at the end. Uh, so if you don't mind, let me just remind you again with that problem. Uh, so do you remember I told you that assume that someone gives us four points O, A, E, and C and they say to us that they are in a space, these four points are every, somewhere in a space, we don't know about the exact location but we know something about these four points, we know that five times vector O A minus two uh, times vector OB minus 3 times vector OC is the zero vector. Okay, so this is exactly the problem I solved, but I rushed through it, so let us just go through it patiently. So let me just remind you about the properties that we learned. Do you remember when I wanted to talk about uh, this scalar multiplication, for example, we learned that if I multiply one by any vector, it becomes the same vector. If I multiply minus one by a vector, it becomes negative of that vector. Of course, if I multiply the number zero by any vector, it becomes the zero vector. And if I multiply any number lambda by the zero vector, then again, uh, the answer is the zero vector. And we also learn that if I have two numbers, say alpha and beta, and if I add them first and then multiply to a vector, I can multiply the first number, I can multiply the second number, and I will get two vectors and I add them. Of course, I told you that this addition here and that addition here are not the same thing, yes? Because this is addition between two numbers, but this is addition between two vectors, even though I am using the same notation for them. And then there's another property that if I have a number alpha, now if I have the sum of two vectors, then I can write it as alpha times A plus alpha times B. And finally, we also have another property that if I have two numbers, if I multiply them first and then multiply it into my vector, it doesn't matter if I multiply the first number by the vector producing a new vector and then multiply it by this number. So these are the important properties that we had. Of course, I didn't motivate you, except for some of them. Of course, this was by definition, this was definition, this one and that one was easy to understand immediately. But I ask you to try to convince yourself that this is actually the case. So you need to have a geometrical uh, reason behind that. Okay, but anyway, so far, nothing is very unusual, so that's exactly natural. So at least the good point is that you don't need to memorize something new because we can just do everything. For example, now the reason might be, you take it as very trivial, the reason, what do you think, do you expect that I can write here, 2 vector A plus 3 vector A, we expect to be able to write 5 vector A. But what is the reason? The reason is actually this property. Uh, oh, I made a mistake here, sorry. This is the same vector. So that, it, that is exactly the same property. So if you have alpha times a vector plus beta times a vector, according to this property, you can add the numbers first and then multiply it by the vector. So if I give you 2a plus 3a, according to that property, you can add the numbers first and then multiply it by that. But of course, 2 plus 3 has a better name, which is A, so you get this one. So this simple property <coughs> that you take it for granted usually is coming from this equality. If this equality is not there, there is no guarantee that we can do this. And of course, it is very important to try. It's a very good exercise. Try to convince yourself geometrically that this is indeed the case. For example, yes, uh, this one is not that hard because this is the same vector. This one is more, uh, more interesting, so that I have two vectors, one number. Okay, so now that you have these things, uh, I want to try to uh, solve this problem. So the problem is that we have four points in a space. The only piece of information about these four points is that we have this equality between these numbers 
these points. We want to show that these three points uh, have to lie on the same straight line. And that is not trivial because if I talk only about two points, it is clear that always and always two points lie on the same line. But this is not guaranteed for three points. Because if I have these three, this scenario, these three points doesn't lie, they don't lie on the same line. Yes? So, but we want to show that if these points satisfy this condition, then they have to be on the same line. And if you remember what I did last time, of course, this kind of experience you will gain in this course. So, for example, in the, instead of this 5, I started from this assumption. Instead of 5, I wrote 2 plus 3 and times OA. And then I copied and pasted the other parts. is equal to the zero vector. And then, according to this rule that you see here, I can multiply two here and three here. So let me just write the rest of it. So it becomes two vector OA plus three vector OA. And then I will have minus two vector OB minus three vector OC is equal to the zero vector. And now, between these two, I can factor a 2 out, so it becomes 2OA minus OB. <coughs> Why can I factor a 2 out? Actually, this is this property. You can factor a number out, yes? And it doesn't matter if this is plus or minus. If you want to, you can write plus or minus. This is, by the way, also plus or minus, because the difference is just plus the negative one, so it's clear. So the reason that I can factor it out is because this property. And then I can factor 3 out between these two. Uh, minus of C. And I think this is a very familiar expression for you. Of course you can use the Schall rule because you can write it as OA, make it positive and then interchange and write BO, and then you know that it is commutative, so you can write this, and these two are cancelled, so you can write BA. You really don't need to draw any pictures. But I just want you to know this combination. Do you remember I told you that if I have a vector, any two points, I can bring in a new point if I like. For example, I can bring in the point X and write it with the final point, write that point with the initial point and subtract them, yes? So that's also a good combination to have in mind, yes? So these two combinations are actually the same, but this is good to remember. So in, in that case, what can I write here? This is a point that I have brought in. This would be the final point, this would be the initial point. So that would be the vector B, A. <coughs> yes? For the same reason, I can write it as 3, and this would be vector uh, CA is equal to the vector 0. And I move this to the right-hand side. We actually justify why these things can be done, even in vectors. So it becomes minus 3 of this. And then I divide by 2, so it becomes BA. And if you don't mind, I will write it positive. But then I will interchange these two, so it becomes AC. So this is what I get from this piece of information. But then it is very nice. Why? Because I don't know anything to these vectors, but I know that one of them is a number multiplied by the other one. So what can I conclude from this relation? I can conclude, if I want to, that BA is parallel to AC. This I can understand. But of course, you see that these two vectors are not only parallel, but they are also having one point in common. So if, if you have two vectors, one point in common, and they want to be parallel, they have to lie on the same straight line. Is that right? Okay, so for example, here, this is vector BA, and this is vector AC. If I draw them non-parallel, so if I draw them in this way, so that these three points are not on the same line, then they cannot be parallel. So when you say that they are parallel, they have to be on the same line, yes? So then it means that A, B, and C all lie on the same line, yes? So this kind of reasoning is good too. Okay. So let me, 
let me use vector arguments to solve some geometric problems, yes? For example, uh, this is an example. Uh, let me write here example. In in a quad in the quadrilateral. <coughs> a B C D. M is the midpoint of uh, AB and N is the midpoint of CB. This is not a vector problem, this is just a geometric problem, is less than or equal to the average of AB and BC. So this I, I like this problem because what relateral so so this is something that I, I, I want you to really learn how to use of course this is a completely geometric problem. For example, if I want to understand the problem, I will draw a quadrilateral uh, You shouldn't make it a very particular, so you just draw a random one. Okay, so when I say any quadrilateral, so you shouldn't draw it a parallelogram. Of course, it is also true if you prove it for any quadrilateral, it is also true for squares, rhombuses, I don't know. Uh, any parallelograms, rectangles, trapeziates, and everything, but even for any uh, non clear. Any non uh, particular, partic any, any kind of uh, quadrilateral. So, and then I told you that there's a standard convention when I read it A, B, C, D, you, you can start from any point and call it A, but you need to decide either go clockwise all the time or anti clockwise. Yeah? <coughs> so, for example, let me start from here, A, and then B. I'm not allowed to write this C. If I go in this direction, I have to write this C and this D. And then I want to find the midpoint of uh, AB and call it, so for, assume that this line segment is equal to this line segment and I call this M and I will find the midpoint here between the C and D, so I don't know, for example here somewhere, and then this length is equal to that length and that is equal to n. So this point and that point, I connect these two together. You see, there is no vectors involved at all. So what I, I want to show that whatever this quadrilateral is, this blue line is always a smaller than the average between this and that. Okay. So, for example, in some cases they can be equal. Yes. For example, if, for example, <coughs> if, if the quadrilateral is a rectangle, for example, if the quadrilateral uh, is a rectangle, what will happen? I take the midpoint. I take the midpoint, and I connect them. Yes. So, if I call this x, this is also x. This is also x. 
So this x is this x plus that x divided by 2. This is exactly equal. But in most cases, this is a smaller than this average. We want to show that. Okay? So, and then I don't think it's a, it's a trivial geometric problem. So how we can think about this problem? What I emphasize again, there is no track of vectors at all. But we want to use vector arguments to show something which is not in, in directly related to vectors. It's a, just a geometric problem. How can we use that? Okay, so let me just give you some... Uh, because you need to have experience uh, to be able to solve these problems. I will actually publish the first set of problems hopefully after today. So one way to look at this problem is to look at, so let me just uh, call, let me write this as a vector, okay? So on any line segment, I can construct two vectors. I can construct vector nm if I want to, or I can construct vector mn if I want to. But let me just repeat, this, there is no vectors here. I am bringing vectors in, and then you will see how I can solve the problem. So, do you agree with me that mn can be written as m, uh, mn can be written as nc, no, sorry, mb plus bc plus cn. If you want, you can look at the picture, but you even don't need to look at the picture, yes? So, mn is vector mn, not the line segment mn. The vector mn is equal to mb plus bc plus cn as vector. Is that understandable? First of all, you don't need to look at the picture because that's the Shaw rule two times. But even if you look at the picture, mb is this vector, bc is this vector, and cn is this vector, so I will get this mn as a vector. Agree? But I can also write mn in the other direction. So I can write this mn again once more by writing this time m. A plus A D plus a D N. Yes? So these two things are actually trivial. <coughs> but then I can add them side by side. Yes? What happens on the left hand side M N plus M N becomes 2 M N. And then I will get M B. I will write MB and MA next to each other plus AD and BC next to each other. I don't need to be careful about the order because it's commutative and I don't need to be worried about how to combine them because it's also associative. So then CN plus DN. Yes, is that understandable? So then what happens, if I ask you what is this sum, this is not something that you can tell me unless you have the assumption in the problem. You know that m is the midpoint. And mb is this vector. I don't want to put vectors here, but mb is this vector. ma is in this vector. This vector. So they are parallel. They have the same sizes because m is the midpoint. And one of them is in this direction and the other one is in that direction. So they add to the zero vector, yes? So is that, is that clear for everyone? This is the zero vector. And for the same reason, what do you think about this one? You see, it is not the Shaw rule because n is sitting both on the right. Even if you want to bring it here, <coughs> it becomes negative. So it by no means it is the Shaw rule. So you have to have this assumption. But we also have assumption that N is also the midpoint of CD. So what is this one then? For the same reason, it is the zero vector. Okay, so what I get is 2MN is equal to, be careful, I just want to test your understanding now, BC. Yes? And then I divide everything by, th by, by 2 or multiply by 1 half. Because I told you, I will try to avoid this symbol. Usually this is not a good symbol when you are dealing with vectors. 
Of course, you see sometimes in the books, but what they mean, it means 1 over 2 multiplied by A. So what I do, I do the same thing. I multiply both sides by 1 half. What I get is 1 half AD plus BC. First of all, talk to me. Is it surprising for you, or is it something wrong with respect to what I ask you to prove? Because that is exact equality, but this is not exact equality. So is there something going wrong or no? You should, there is no inconsistency going on. <coughs> is, is the question clear? So my question is that what I get, I get mn is exactly equal to one half vector AD plus vector BC. But if this is exactly equal, so then the problem has some problems, yes? Because this tells you that this is equal sometimes, but most of the time probably is less than. Okay, is this a wrong or is that wrong? Or they are talking different things. So apparently this shouldn't be a con inconsistency. They are talking different things. They are not the same thing. This equality is between three vectors. Okay? But this inequality is between three... Three? Lengths. Length, three numbers. Number. Yes? So, the, so this is something else. This is talking about three vectors. This is talking about three lengths. Yes? They have some kind of relation, because if I ask you what is mn, you can say something. mn is the number, is the length of this vector. And then if I ask you what is ad here, ad is the length of that vector, and bc is the length of that vector. Okay, but this, vec this one as a vector is equal to this one as a vector. If two vectors are equal, do you think I can conclude that the norm of this vector this is immediately clear. If two vectors are equal, then it means that the norm of them are also equal. This, do you agree with this one or not? Okay, but now, do you remember we had a formula that if I have lambda times a vector and I am interested to calculate the norm, what was the general formula? I need to take the absolute value of my number and multiply it by the norm of this vector. But this, this is playing the role of lambda in this problem, and this is playing the role of this a. I don't need to put absolute value here, because 1 over 2 is already a positive number. So what I do, of course I put absolute value of 1 over 2, but absolute value of 1 over 2 is 1 over 2 itself, and it becomes the norm of vector ad plus bc. Yes, is that understandable? But do you remember, we started, so this is a smaller than or equal, do you remember, triangle inequality. So this would be AD plus BC. Yes, do you remember, we talked about this triangle inequality more or less a lot. If I add two vectors and I then calculate the norm, there is no guarantee that this is equal to the sum of the norms. Yes, do you remember? Sometimes it might be equal, but sometimes it is less than. So the norm of the sum is less than or equal to the sum of the norms. Yes? So this is why 1 half is just 1 half. I copied and paste. This combination is less than or equal to this combination using this triangle equality. Is that clear? Yes or no? Okay, but now, what is a better way? In geometry, we just simply write this as what? Mn. Yes, the length of vector Mn in geometry, we just say Mn, means the length. Yes, and then if I ask you what is this, this is just written in a slightly different way in geometry, and this is slightly different in geometry. So Mn is equal to this, but is smaller than or equal one half of the sum of these two numbers. 
So you see that in the beginning, I do not have any vectors at all. But I use my knowledge about vectors to be able to, so to prove something which is not related to vectors in the beginning. Yes, I myself made a nice connection between the vectors and this shape and geometry and used the properties of vectors and uh, triangular inequality in vectors to prove this. Is that understandable? Yes or no? Okay. So this is a good and nice example. I want you to actually learn that. Sometimes I will give you some exercises that you need to practice yourself to understand and to be good in solving these problems. Okay. But now there is another important problem. There is a very famous uh, terminology in linear algebra, and that is called linear combination, a linear combination of vectors. This is just probably a big name for something very simple. If I give you a bunch of vectors, if you multiply each vector by a number that you like and add the result, that result is called the linear combination of the vectors. For example, if I give you only two vectors, A and B, for example, you multiply this by 2, you multiply this by minus 5, and add them. Then you get a new vector X. Okay? This is the terminology. I say that X is a linear combination of A and B. X is a linear combination <coughs> of the vector A and the vector B. Or I don't know, for example, if I give you three vectors A, B, and C, I multiply this by square root of 2 over 2a, I multiply this by, I don't know, by 5 over 3b, and I multiply this by minus 7. So by the way, you can also write minus 7c. You don't need to write plus minus. And then let me call this one y. Yes? So these numbers are actually our better root, okay? So I, I read it in this way. I say that this vector y is a linear combination of these three vectors. So that is just the terminology that we have, okay? Now, it, this is very, very important to improve your skills in writing vectors as linear combinations of other vectors. Yes? So, now my question is this. Let me start with some kind of motivation. First of all, can you tell me, if I have this scenario, if I have a vector A, and then let me write another, uh, draw another vector from here. I am starting them from the same point. I call this vector A, I call this vector B. I don't know anything about this angle. I don't know anything about the length. But what I am telling you, let us connect these two points, the tip points together, okay, and then find the midpoint. So, for example, the midpoint would be, so here let me call it M, okay, and let me call this point O. So, what I'm saying is that I, I actually bisected this line segment, I connected the endpoints, okay, and then find the midpoint, and then I have from here to here, and then I put an arrow here. So this becomes a vector, OM. My question for you is that, can you write OM as a linear combination of vector A and vector B? Okay? So let me just write. Express OM vector 
as a linear combination of vectors A and B. I want to hear from you if, I, if you have any opinions. Okay, I can pause the video a little bit. Okay, so any, any answers? Uh, um, oh, exactly. I think I do. Okay, if you want, I can wait a little bit more, otherwise I can hear from you. You have the right combination. Okay, can you just look? <laughs> yes. Uh, no, uh, yeah, okay. Okay, so that is correct. Uh, but let me solve it. You, what you have done, I think it's algebraic way of doing that. It's good because that's the only way we can do when it becomes uh, here or there. So that is, we have to learn algebraic method. But in this case, I prefer to start from geometric method so that you can understand what's going on. Okay, momentarily do not look at this red one. If I ask you what is a plus b, how do you construct a plus b? Because these two vectors are being drawn from the same point, so what I do, I complete the parallelogram there, yes? So to complete the parallelogram, what I do, from here I draw a line parallel to vector a, and from here I draw a line parallel to vector b, and then when I connect this point to this point, this would be vector a plus b. Is that understandable? Mm -hmm. But my question for you, do you think this vector a plus b lies on top of om or not? Yes. Or they make some small angles? How do you know that they are not making a very, very small angle? They exactly lie on top of each other. How do you know that? Because my, my parallelogram is really, really poor here. So if the, if the deviation is just one degree, probably we cannot detect it with our eyes. But how do you know? I need you, I want to listen to your reason why this is not the case. A plus B exactly lies on this red vector one. Yes? Because you said the diagonals will always intersect. Yes, and intersect, uh, not intersect, bisect. Bisect. Yes, they bi always bisect. And I have already given you that this is the midpoint. Yes? So if I, if I have a parallelogram, any parallelogram, and I give, tell you that I connect this one to this one, it automatically passes through the midpoint. And there is only one single midpoint. I have already reserved that single midpoint for M, so the again the midpoint is M. So it means that when I, so now I am sure that when I do this, even if my picture is poor, I am completely sure that vector A plus B lies exactly on this red arrow. And what is the length of the blue one compared to the red one? It's double. It's double. So the blue one is double in size, yes, because this diagonal is also bisected. So it means that OM is half of this vector. Everyone agrees with this one now, by this picture. But then it means that OM, I multiply one half in, it becomes one half A plus one half B. What I needed you to write, I asked you to write this as a linear combination of A and B, so we did it. So OM is one half A plus one half B. So this is a geometrical picture. It's, a, it's very important when you are dealing with vector, try to see it in both ways. But let us do it completely algebraic, <coughs> okay? So using vector algebra. So it means that let me drop, let me clean this part. I don't need to do this. Now I want to follow yours actually. So this was point M. So I don't think it should be hard for you now. So I want to write OM as a linear combination of, o, a, of a and B. Let us consider this triangle, for example. What can I write for OM? I can write it is vector A, yes, plus, I don't know, what do you want to call? So let me call this point A. This would be vector A then. So everyone agrees that with that? So vector A plus vector AM 
is vector over. And I can do the same thing here, so let me call this tip B. What can I write for OM? I can write vector B this time, but plus BM. Okay? Why this is natural to write these things? Because my goal is to write, to express OM in terms of A and B. This relation expresses OM in terms of A. This expresses OM in terms of B with some additional things that I don't like, but I can hope for the best, yes? And this will happen, actually. Because when I add them, it becomes 2OM. This becomes just A plus B. But what happens with this? This becomes the zero vector, yes? Because they are of the equal size, they are lying on each other, and then one point in this direction, the other points in that direction, so that is zero. And then I need to divide by two, I multiply everything by one half, so it becomes one half plus and one half. Yes? Now I want to make it a little bit harder, because if you can answer the second one, then we can answer the most general case. So now, instead of putting this in the middle, I want to divide it into three equal pieces and take one of those ones. Okay, so let me just try to write it down here. <coughs> so the problem is the same, but I am changing the location of my point. So, so assume that this is a steel vector A, this one is vector B, what I do again, I connect the final points and then I divide this dotted line into three equal pieces, for example, here, I don't know, and here. Anyway, I'm assuming that this length and that length and that length are the same. Okay, let us make a problem in this way. Let us call this one M. Let me call this one N. Okay? My question is for you. First, concentrate as before on OM. So let me call this one O. Let me call this one A. Let me call this one B. So again, the question is the same. I want you to write for me OM as a linear combination of A and B. If you are done with that, go and find ON in terms of A and B. Okay, see how it goes. I pause the video, I, wa I want to wait for you. Uh, no, uh, let us talk a little bit. The algebraic method works here, so you didn't follow what I told you. Yes, you need to follow the rules. So your goal is to write OM in terms of A and B. The first two relations are the same. Yes? So what I can write, it doesn't depend on the shape. Do you agree even in this picture, I can write the vector OM is equal to vector A plus AM. Do you agree with this one in this picture even? Yes. It doesn't matter, yes? <coughs> because this is vector A and this is vector AM up to here. This gives me vector O. So that's good. Yes? And then the other relation, why do you give up for that one? This would be B plus what? Plus BM. So, so far so good. But there's, there's, a, there's a problem here. In the previous case, I didn't need to adjust anything. Because when I add them together, these two coincidentally were opposite together and cancel out. But if I just naively add them here, it is not, I get a true statement, but this is useless. Why? Because if I add them, it becomes 2m, good. It becomes a plus b, that's also good. But am is from here to here, and bm is from here to here. When I add them, it does not become, it doesn't vanish. So something less, so I will have some leftovers. Left. But that is not a wrong equality, that is the correct equality, but that is not what I am looking for, because I do not want to have leftovers. I want to write everything in terms of A and B. So that in, if you think by this logic, then it is easy to get rid of one of them, to, to, to understand. I mean, you can express A and B in... I mean, 
uh, from A to B is the same as A minus, I mean, uh, vector A minus vector B. Yes. And you can express those in, like, the vectors A and B, and you can get the final answer. Well, could you, could, did you do that? Uh, I mean, for this, uh, yeah, I did. So what's the answer? Uh, one third of B plus uh, two thirds of eight. Yeah, that's the, that's the correct answer. That's the correct answer. But what I was thinking, I was thinking a little bit differently. I was thinking that what is the relation between AM and BM? BM is from this side to this side, AM is from that side to that side, yes? So do you agree that BM... So can you tell me what is the relation between BM and AM? I want to put equality somewhere. So what's the relation between them, yes? BM is 2AM. Not 2AM. Minus 2AM. Because the, this is the opposite direction. So BM is what? Minus uh, 2AM. Yes? So, and then what I want to do, so BM is just minus 2AM. Agree? And I want to get rid of this leftover. So what do I do naturally? I want to have OM, I want to have A, I want to have B, but I want to get rid of, unfortunately, vector AM. So what should I do? Before adding them, what should I do? Yes? Multiply by 2. This multiply by 2, but then you add, this is gone. Yes? So I multiply the first one by 2. Yes, and then the other one is OM. And then I add them. Yes? Then because when I add them, this becomes 3 OM. This becomes 2A plus B. And this one and that one are gone, so I'm not having any leftovers. Yes? So that was my rest of the trick. And then I divide everything by 3, so OM is two-thirds of A plus one-third of B. I think these are the numbers that you mentioned exactly, yes? yes. So yeah, that is the linear combination for vector OM. So it is very important to write o, be able to write this OM as a linear combination. Okay, what do you think I can do for ON now? So OM is this vector, this is vector OM, so what can I write for OM? So what is vector OM? Again, I can write it in two different ways. I can go in this direction, but what should I write? I should write vector A plus 2AN, I'm oh, sorry, plus AN. Okay, and then I can write ON in this direction. It would be B plus BN. But before adding them, I need to get rid of these leftovers, yes? Yeah? So what is this good suggestion? So if you look here, AN is in this direction, BN is in this direction, AN is minus 2 times BN, for example, yes? So what can I do? I can multiply uh, the, pre the, the lower one by 2 this time. Agree? If I multiply this by 2, what will happen? It becomes 2 on is equal to 2b plus 2bn. And when I add them, on and on becomes 3on. And then 2b and a, it becomes a plus 2b. But I hope that you agree with me that this vector plus this vector is zero. Yes? Because AN is from here to here. This is vector AN. Vector BN is this vector. They lie on the same line. They are pointing in opposite directions. One of them has length two times larger than the other one. And I am multiplying the, the smaller one by 2 to compensate for that. So when I add them, it becomes 0. Is that understandable? So this is again 0. Now if I divide, 
on becomes a third a plus two third b. Yes? Is that clear? So in principle, this can be done not for these particular numbers. The general theorem is this. The general theorem is that assume that we have this one, this vector a, and I have this vector b, uh, vector b, so let me call this point a, this point a, a and b and o, and then I connect them and I just pick any, any random point that I like to. For example, I don't know, let me, let me choose this one. And I call it n. But I give you this ratio. Okay? That ratio is enough. I tell you, for example, if you divide the length of AM over MB from length point of view. By the way, when I put this, I am not allowed to put vectors. Because vectors are not able to be, uh, they, we cannot divide vectors. So AM is the length of this line segment, and that's a number, that's a number, so I can divide. So assume that this is alpha over beta. Alpha, beta are positive real numbers. Real numbers, positive. Now, I want to ask the same question here. We want to find the general formula. I want to write this green vector. Uh, I want to write this green vector uh, in terms of vector A and vector B. This is a very important problem, so I just, you will see later that we use this a lot. So let me just emphasize this on this a little bit. So, that I want, so you, you can think about this, and I want to clean it. Uh, I want to wait for you to find it for you. So alpha and beta are positive real numbers. And I know that if I divide AM over MB, I get alpha over beta, then I want to find OM in terms of A and B. So what I am asking you is to write, to fill up these, quest, these gaps. Yes? I mean, I found another way to express the whole thing. Right? Yes. So, like from the beginning, I did. So you, you can express uh, AB mm -hmm. as uh, B minus A. So let me write. AB <coughs> is B minus A. Yes. Yes. Everyone agrees that AB. I am just connecting the tip of these arrows. This they have started from the first point. So I connect them because I want to write B minus A. I have to put the arrow to the, towards the positive vector, so that's yeah. correct. If you multiply that by the ratio, which uh, I... From I'll, both sides? Uh, no, you, you have that in uh, parentheses. Yes. You multiply... No, no, I mean... Uh, so you, uh, so uh, the ratio multiplied by uh, uh, vector B minus A, vector A. So you can come and write it here, but you might be on YouTube, okay, if that's a problem. Yes. So, yeah, the ratio is how divided by beta. Uh, this is b minus a plus a. Because we go from here to here, and uh, this length is the ratio yes. of the whole. So this holds, and I, I think you can figure out that one after this. Mm -hmm. right. So that becomes OM. Is that OM? Yeah, that's OM. Yeah, that's OM. Yeah, that's a very, very nice way, by the way. I believe that's better than my way. Yeah, that's yes. really Thank helpful. you. So let us let me explain this method. Yes? So what he is saying is that, first of all, do you agree that what I have written here on top is correct? AB is B minus A. So, he is telling himself, let us concentrate and go from O. My goal is to go from O to M. So I start from going from O to... Let me just write it the other way around. So if you want to do OM, what you do, you start from A, and then you go to AM. So this is exactly as before. Okay? But I do not write another one from that direction. 
So what he is saying is that let us understand what is vector uh, AM. Yes? So what is vector AM? So you have written it is alpha over beta times vector M. Uh, no, that is not exact ratio. Your method is correct. That's a miscalculation. Do you agree with me? Because this tells me that the length of AM is equal to alpha over beta, the length of MB. Yes. Yes. yes, this is so that alpha over beta is not the correct ratio. But let us follow his method. I think this is better. But can you so this is mistake. This is not correct. But can you correct it now? So he, he is telling you that okay, I go I want to calculate OM. So I go from vec O to A, which is vector A, and then from A to M. That's clear. And then I copy and paste A because I want to have it. I want to get rid of this part in favor of B or A or both, yes? But I don't like A M. So from this assumption, from this assumption, I know that A M is alpha over beta times A B. But I don't need that. I want to write A, -A, -A M a question mark A B. If I can find this question mark, this question mark is something that I have to write here. Uh, are you following or not? Everyone, if no, uh, let me just repeat. Let me just repeat because that's important. So we know that AM over MB is alpha over beta. <coughs> so this is clear. AM is equal to alpha over beta multiplied by MB. This is simple. This is clear. That's coming from the assumption. But can I can I write a m is alpha over beta m b? Can I write this? Can I write this? This I can write. Yes. Why? Because from length point of view, I have this relation. A m points to the right. MB also points to the right, alpha and beta are positive. So, even though this was not at the level of vectors, it was at the level of the length of the vectors, <coughs> but this can also immediately be translated at the level of vectors. Is that right? Okay. So, you see that AM is alpha over beta MB. So, if instead of AM, I put this one, then MB would be the leftover. Unless, instead of connecting AM to MB, I can find a way to connect AM to AB. But now, so my question is that, how AM is related to AB? <coughs> I know that AM is related to MB using this relation. My question is that, how AM is related to AB? How, how, how AM is related to AB? Yes? AB. No, I just want to give me a number. Oh. Number in terms of alpha and beta. I don't want to bring in another vector. Then, then the question would be how to get rid of that vector. Yeah, originally, I wrote alpha divided by beta because I thought beta was AB. Yes? Not MB. No problems, but can you just fill up this gap question mark? It's extremely easy question. So in that case, let me just repeat. Do you remember we had divided this into three pieces? Okay, so AM was from here to here. So what is the relation of this length to the whole length? Yes, what is that? I know this one is two times of this one. But now my question is that how this one is related to the whole one, not to this small piece. This one is two times larger than this one. So if I, let me write it. This is A in the previous problem. In the previous problem, AM is two times MB. But my question is that AM is how much of AB? Everyone should be able to answer that, yes? AM 
with respect to AB. Yes, yes. What is that? <laughs> you said something. <laughs> Come on. It's very simple. I, I probably confused you. <laughs> Two thirds. Yes? Because each one of them is one third. So this one is two-thirds of the whole, yes? So AM is, is two-thirds of AB. Do you agree or not? Because AM, so let me write X, X, and X. All of them are the same. AM contains two Xs. AB contains three Xs. So it is two-thirds, yes? Is that right? This is for three cases. But we don't know that. We have alpha and beta. Now, can you finally fill up this gap? Yes? AM divided by AB or? No. AM divided by AB. AB is 3 axis. 2 divided by 3. Okay, 2 divided by 3. Not AM divided by MB. I mean, I mean the length of AM divided by... No, there is one something. So you wrote alpha over beta. I told you this is the wrong combination. I want to find the correct combination. Okay. <laughs> you want to make me responsible. Yes. <laughs> you need to give me a number. Then it's I, either I agree with that or not. <laughs> number means in terms of alpha and beta. Of course, in the general case, I do not have numbers. How did you come... So, I don't know, let me just write it. <clears throat> yes? What is that? Alpha over not beta. Over alpha plus beta. <laughs> Isn't it clear? <laughs> so now you see now you see that from a pedagogical point of view my method was better. <laughs> yes? But anyway. So let me, by the way, let me also teach you this. <coughs> this is a very good excuse to teach you something about ration, ra uh, ratios. Let me just deviate from our... Oops, you are finished. Uh, yeah, so I just give you... Uh, let me just finish it in one minute. So this will be left, so I will not publish the problems today because I have to finish that. I will publish it probably tomorrow after the next lesson. So, one thing that I want you to learn, it's extremely important. So, forget about this. That's just a deviation from the main topic. Just go back to, I don't know, uh, primary, primary school. So, A over B is equal to C over D. Okay. So, something that you need to know about this is that you can do a lot of things keeping this equality intact. So one way, for example, is to multiply this by 2 and that by 2, for example. Yes, that's one way. But there are some non-trivial ways that you need to appreciate that. So I can, I can combine the numerator to the denominators. So what? I can write A over A plus B. This is very interesting. It remains the same if I do the same thing on the right, which is not trivial. Yes, because I'm adding something in the denominator of that one and that one. I'm claiming they remain the same. Let me just tell you with an example. But of course, proof of this is very simple. And you have to be able at this level to prove it rigorously. So, for example, if I have two-thirds, it's equal to four over six, for example. Now, let us keep the numerators the same. And I add this numerator to its own denominator. It becomes five. And I do the same thing here. It becomes ten. 2 over 5 is not the previous number, 4 over 6, 10 is not the previous number, but the still equality is the same. Okay, is that understandable? So why this is useful, this is, I will talk about this later. Here I know that AM over MB is equal to alpha plus beta. This is a fraction equal to another fraction. So what I do, I will keep the numerators the same. Yes, and I will add the numerator to the denominator. Yes? According to this rule, this should also hold. But what is this combination? AM plus MB is AB. So this I can clean and write AB. And then I can clean and put AB here. And that was your question. Okay, so that's a very extremely important properties of equality of fractions. 
next time I will start talking about this again, listing some more interesting properties of fractions, and then we come back to this problem. Yes, hopefully we finally will be at that point that I can publish more problems for you. Okay. Thank you.